7.36, it just churned. You don't need out. I, I just let him out. I like how Chip's bowel movements have become a giant part of this channel. Okay, we're gonna be working with a big thick sheet of brass and a piece of wood today. Good, old, smooth, delicious, buttery, perfect to carve, ideal for everything Tupelo wood. And then this piece of brass will hopefully be the bait's only form of ballast weight. Let's cut that out. Occasionally I'll make the executive decision that a wooden bandsaw blade becomes a metal one because it's had a long enough life. That feels heavy. Things getting a little hot. Woo! Hot! <laughs> Just blow on it, that'll help. Remember to blow on your brass, fellas. Here we go, that's the belly. Let's cut out the body. This is strange. Never cut a lure out quite like that. I just scratched a center line with a drill bit straight down the middle of the belly. It's not even a good fit yet. There's work to do. But I'm gonna hollow out right here behind the gills and then right in there and the tail. And all along, all, I'm just gonna hollow all this out. Just leave it at that. With this big scraggly burr bit. Felt kind of dangerous with the 16th inch bit, but that worked very nice. Hole for the front hook hanger. Okay. And there's the hook hanger. That'll sit in there perfectly. Perfect. Neither one of them broke all the way through, but they're like as close as you can get to not breaking through and still existing like that, so perfect. Now I gotta drill holes down into each one of these, nice and centered and everything. That is a broken off drill bit into a sheet of brass. It's never coming out. I started on another. I've been working on it. That ate some time. I'm using cutting oil now, so well, WD-40. That shouldn't happen again.
Okay, that's a little big. I'm gonna widen it with the Dremel so that'll fit in there nicely. It's gonna have like a brass enclosure and then a piece of stainless steel is what everything hinges against. Eventually the brass would wear away against steel. And there's the connection into the body. That's pretty good. Sweet, okay. Those will be glued in and won't ever be able to come out once they are. And we'll glue in the screw eye down there for the hook hanger. Brass plates ready. All right. I just shoved those twist wires in there. What are we dealing with? We got quite the range of motion on that brass plate. Very nice. It's just swinging down there. What the heck is that gonna do in the water? I have no clue. Hopefully something. Let's get this body carved out the rest of the way. Need to sharpen my knife. There we go. I think I'm gonna chamfer this edge too. That's just too sharp. Very slightly though. Super glue bath, load up a cup, break out a brush, and apply it lightly. Careful not to flick it with your bristles everywhere too. It's a bit of an irritant to say the least. If you soak it into one spot too much, it boils out of the wood and forms a white crusty, just not ideal spot to paint over and you need to sand it back down. I tried to be careful. It's actually looking all right. Looks like we're good. This was clean. I just sprayed accelerator over everything. We're not getting any crusties. I'm happy with that. Just a few 400 grit finishing touches. 400 grit's usually never enough to actually break through and reach the unsealed wood. It's just gonna give it the smoothness it deserves. That's right, you deserve this bait. Just don't rub the same spot for 20 minutes. I gotta check myself about that sometimes. Bladed belly jerk bait, ready to paint. Starting with white. I should have a paint scheme in mind. This is a shad shape. Jeff, come here. Come on, come on. Chip was chasing a cat. Outside, not very nice. Okay, it's a shad shape. I just did a shad, what should I do? How about a chubby chub? Why not? Big swinging plate of brass on the belly, but we're gonna go with all the purples and golds and bronzes and coppers and browns and yeah, sapia. Here comes a little bit of lavender. 
just off the tail fading into the rest of the body. Now we need a black lateral line. All right, this is something that like 80% of the time I overdo, so let's not overdo it this time. I think I stayed pretty reasonable with that. This is strange to paint. It really feels like it's missing something. Last base color before scales is gonna be gray. I'm trying to leave as much of the lavender as possible, but we need to darken up what will be behind the scales. So behind the scales is dark and the scales can bring their pearlescence and bright colors out more. See, there's still brown and sapia and lavender and it's all darker. We broke out the fine meshing. We're gonna go copper and silver. No, copper and pearl white. Let's do pearl white first. I decided to add some silver. It's gonna go just like the next level up. The copper's just gonna have to be really high up, I think. I'm just gonna have to come straight down on it. That'll spill over the sides as well. That's gonna be bright but it'll look good with the brass plate. I think any details in the gills will be done quite a bit with gold. So we'll have uh, gold, copper, and brass, the trifecta of metallic yellows. Time for hopefully beautiful scale reveal. Such a struggle to nicely do a scale reveal. Here we go. It definitely has that very translucent yet pearlized scale look that chubs have. Like their scales just fall off, you know, and they're tiny. Ooh, look at that on the top. Super tiny, but super defined. Everywhere. That's nice. Pearl white on the bottoms of those gills. They needed a refreshing, a brightening up. Wicked oxide red is in the Micron. I've been switching it up between the Micron and the HPCS. This one's for the heavier stuff, like starting with white, the copper, pearlescent colors shoot through it a lot better because I have a 0.5 millimeter nozzle on this one. This one has a point, what is it? What the heck is it? It's either a 0.17, no. A lot less than 0.5, I think it's less than 0.3. Might be like a 0.28 or something. For detail stuff, right up at the top of the gills there, ever so faintly, we're gonna give it a delicious little wicked red oxide tint. Can you tell? Cause I can, and that makes it look so much better. Just adds attention to the carvings and that detail right there. Just going back and forward. I have a picture of a chub right there that I am very roughly going off of. I'm definitely leaving the top very coppery compared to the real thing, but the color blend is correct. This will look more correct with a big brass plate at the belly as well. It's looking good. I think we can choose the eyes now. The only other thing I did and didn't show was add a bit of gold on the gills right there. That's it. Dumping out the dead meat customs. I think these are all 10 millimeter. I think I gotta go with the low hanging pupil natural color. I painted this bait too naturally to not do that. And I think I need to offset the giant flappy brass plate with more naturalness. Medium thick black super glue. That was a very correct choice. Good job me. And good job Dead Meat Custom Lure Eyes for looking so good. Everybody give yourself a pat on the back. Praises all around. Clear coat, hard Chinese UV resin you get off of Amazon. Squirt some in a cup. I'm gonna brush it on the bait, put it on my rotisserie for a while, and then put it in the light. That was an even one. That looks really good, that clear coat. Woo, that's hot. I put the whole cup in there just to see what would happen. Already hardened and hot. It's suspended in there with both lights on, so. This will take about a half an hour. And yes, I wear sunglasses when I do that. That's super intense UV light. We'll fry your eyeballs. I'm gonna go make more coffee and eat lunch. It's lunchtime. When I'm done, that'll be done and let and 
Should I get the kayak out? There it is. A big brass belly blade jerk bait. I think you'd call this a jerk bait still. I don't know. I'm hoping it wiggles a lot, vibrates a lot, jiggles a lot, who knows. I'm pretty certain it's gonna have a cool kind of thing that happens on the fall, like a, a flappy fall. Let's see. Test tank's ready to go. Okay, it just reminds me of the action of a spoon. I mean, it has a pretty good action, but I wasn't expecting a swim. Yeah, all we're getting is a bit of a swim. I'm sure that blade down there is flashing nicely. I'm, I'm okay with that. I think I can catch a fish with that. It just flaps. Swimmy, nice little flap. Nothing vibratory about it. Nothing jiggly. It doesn't do that, you know? It's not blade bait like, that's what I'm trying to say. One day! How much does it weigh? 1.5 ounce. I'm not gonna say that we're gonna go catch a pike, because every time I've said that so far this year, we have not caught a pike. Now we're pretty much guaranteed to catch a pike. Here we go. Brass blade belly jerk bait. We got a kayak. We got some backwater. You always have to scamper down that hill when you're pulling a kayak. It starts pushing. It's time. Big hill. All right, I have to go publish a video and get back out there. As you can see, we're also trying something else out with this bait. Maybe a line tie from the top. We'll get water to kind of pass by this blade in a better direction so it does vibrate a little. I don't know. Hopefully that helps a little. Got my video uploaded. Can't even watch the comments. Gotta go fish. We're gonna leave the yakardoodle. We're gonna walk back to this pond. It was one time years ago, this time of the year. I was clobbering them with a lipless crankbait back here. This is kind of similar, hopefully, after the modifications. I was expecting this to be a lot more up. Well, Bob Saget, maybe I could put a big weight off the nose. I want to get this thing shaken. Okay, I squeezed a big drop shot, or split shot, sorry. Weight onto the nose, and still nothing. Getting desperate. I just added like a half ounce of lead to the front hook hanger. <laughs> Woo, that's heavier. That is definitely heavier. That's rough, man. That was like three hours. That was longer than I kayaked for. I have a little over an hour of daylight left, maybe an hour and a half, and we are at Jesse's. Man, if something showed just like a little bit of interest in this bait, it'd be a big morale booster. Don't even need to catch it. Just, just kind of look at it. That'd be nice. Can you guys tell what I did? Took off a bunch of brass. Ouch, wow, howie. I've just been stabbing myself with hooks in these recent videos. I just took this thing to the sander and removed the material. 
which got this thing way more head forward. It was butt heavy, causing a bit of an issue. But now, no matter how hard you yank it, it's got a good action, watch. Well, let's just say it tries its best to have a good action. But uh, the best thing it has going for it is that it wobbles really nicely on the fall. Does a good shimmy shimmy. There's probably a reason you don't see baits like these in stores very often at all. From a lure making perspective, it seems like it'd be deadly, but it's just kind of meh. Good to know, I've never made one like that before. And I probably will never make one like this again. Maybe shorten that metal mass down there to where it's, it's more localized, that might do something. Oh, I was gonna try the other line tie, one second. Maybe there is hope for it, after all. I, I highly doubt, so. No, no, no. That just makes it so it never comes in straight. What a bummer. Maybe a lip on this thing would do something. I've just been so discouraged with it up until now that I just don't even want to put a lip on it. It sinks really hard, that's why. Maybe a thinner sheet of metal, more localized in one spot, to where it's not so heavy, it still floats, put a lip on it, yada, yada, yada. Let's give it one more chance to get bit. One more. Let's find out how pikeish the pike spot is today. Usually when you fish with something for that long, you're bound to come across a dumb fish, a desperate fish, a fish with no boundaries or moral direction, one willing to open its mouth and just engulf anything it sees. I feel like those fish aren't even willing to give this bait a follow-up. I saw nothing following it. I saw nothing interested in it. I'm confused. I'm probably just very unlucky. It's got the flash, you know? That is a big reflective piece of brass. It's got a decent paint scheme. It doesn't look too unnatural. I don't know. I'm done with it. I'm sick of fishing with it. it. It fishes like garbage. It can get so annoying to fish with a bait with such poor action for so long. If every cast frustrates you and then you are thousands of casts later, you can get so frustrated. You gotta, you gotta be cool though. Keep casting. I don't know why I do that to myself. Why have I constructed this YouTube channel that just, that's most of what I do is continue fishing with things I don't want to fish with. Didn't even snag the thing. It sinks like a rock. Couldn't even snag it. I would have felt relief having snagged this. I didn't though. There is no relief with this bait. This is pretty much like an evil bait that I made somehow. So I'm gonna put it away. I might throw it away. I don't like it. Anyway, enjoy the bonus fishing. I clobbered him. I shouldn't ruin it for you. But it proves, like that was just one day later, it proves that they were biting just fine. They were interested in baits. Not that one though. Not the brass belly chubby chub. Nope, not this one. On to the next bait. And enjoy the bonus fishing. And yes, chip is regular. Nobody asked, but you get, you get to know to put an end to this losing streak. We're gonna shoot stuff that catch fish, catches fish. Three inch prey baits, 2.3 inch headless prey baits, slouches, everything. I'm gonna pile up loads of proven baits and go slay them. We're gonna shoot the juice and crush them. An entire inject to catch. There's molds up here you're not supposed to see. Okay, bubbly and hot. Okay, we got motor oil. This is the first time I've ever used motor oil. Soft plastic colorant. 10 drops. It's supposed to be like a poopy brown where it's thick and then uh, greenish turquoise-ish where it's not thick. It's quite the color contrast. Since these baits are small, I feel like I need more. Just glob an unmeasured amount in there. We're gonna couple that with a bunch of iridescent pearl on the bellies of these things. It's probably been done before, but I've n I don't know what a laminate with motor oil looks like. Just a white belly. 
And a motor oil top. Let's find out. Look at that. When you look at it and the white's behind it, it's just brown. Dude. No clue if I added too much or too little motor oil, but I don't care because that looks really, really good. You know, I don't know what the perfect balance plastic to colorant ratio for motor oil is, but does that matter when they look like that? There's so much shiftiness in there. Oops. That iridescent pearl color belly alone, this stuff is delicious by itself, but it just throws light through that motor oil really cool too. Wow. That's gorgeous. After one D mold of the slouch, I'm pretty hyped. That's really good stuff. This is not a production mold. This is a prototype. Don't think that you can buy this because you can't. We were never able to get the 2.3 into a consistent with a divider plate, little plastic twisters. Sends the top color to the top and the bottom to the bottom from one shot, eight at a time. Never able to get that consistent, but we tried. And as you can see, these aren't perfectly consistent. I even shot them backwards. It kind of, the mold still kind of works, that one, but wow, look at that. Goes from that light, very light poopy color, straight to a greenish, greenish stuff. But you know, as these, as these kick around and move in the water, it's gonna be color shifting like that. The mold version available for the 2.3 headless prey bait is the top injection eight shot, eight cavity, eight shots. Vital mold in my collection. What's it look like in the three inch prey bait? It looks like exactly what you want. Impossible not to be satisfied with that. <laughs> Tainted plastic cups, just not cleaning them out. I don't care. We're going for natural. You don't have to clean your cups out if you're going for natural. It hasn't rained in quite a while and the water around here is getting pretty clear, so I go natural when that happens. Let's just throw a three inch prey bait on to start with. Look at that. Deadly. Got a new rod. I'm gonna have some fun today. When it's a really nice day like today, and there are no fishermen at this spot, it's usually a bad sign. I've learned to roll with the bad signs though. Bonus fishing. I'll even go as far as to snag something. If we snag something, I'll, I'm gonna call it official today. Dude, this longer rod feels good. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I make myself laugh. Watch me catch a quill back. Completely unasked for fish. <laughs> I felt like a fish. Wow, I just started whistling when I, when I hooked this fish. I was so happy. That was the weirdest reaction I've ever had to hooking a fish. Dude, I called it. I called it. It's official. Dirty old quill back. Like three inch epic prey baits. A little bit of motor oil, a little bit of color shift. He's got some pretty sweet gill spots though. Look at that. There is some beauty in those scales and gills. Lovely. Good for you, quill back. Be free. Oh my goodness, that feels good. That was the first fish on this Phoenix M1, a quill back. Keep them coming. I'll fight those all day. What if that's all we get in this video? Oh no. That feeling always sets in after the first catch. What if that's all that I catch? I shouldn't be greedy. I'm grateful for the quill back, I guess. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that felt good. Some tappy tap action. Is this a walleye? It's a small mouth. I haven't caught one this year yet. 
but I just did. It's official. I'm much happier about that one. Small mouth, like the three inch epic prey bait. What a brownie. Be free. I really like the tap that that fish just gave me. I'm really liking this rod. I would totally ask for a fish with some size now, but that would jinx it, so I'm not gonna. Ooh, bumped into a tail fin right there. You can feel everything with this rod. <laughs> yeah. There's a good hit. Pulled my rod down. Surprised me. The smallies are biting. The small smallies, they still fight nice. And it's official again. And be free. Thanks for fighting and biting. What is this? What is this? What is this? Oh my goodness, it's not moving at all. Okay, it's starting to move. What is this? Is this a turtle? I'm going to leave my drag where it is. I feel like I did set the hook pretty good. Okay. If it really decides to go, it's gone. It's probably a buffalo carp. We're just going to maintain pressure. Oh, it's coming at me a little bit. What is that stick doing? Are, are there multiple lines attached to this fish? It's just been living in bondage its whole life. I see a big shadow. I saw a big fin. We still rolling. Testing. Had to test my microphone. Oh. So I wasn't actually hooked into a fish. I picked up a line that had a really big fish on it. Dude, my arm's tired. That was a big fish. I hope I broke that line for him though. And he's relatively free. I feel kind of heroic. Ha, <laughs> good hit. Tap it, tap, tap. Best one of the day. One pound maybe. Thank goodness, the small mouth are starting to bite. They can be five pounds in here. And those can be really fun. Okay, I might have snagged something right there. It's big again. Is this that same thing? I kind of hope it is. We need to see what it is. This can't be that same snag. I'm gaining way too much on it. I definitely snagged something though. Ooh. I snagged a good walleye. Right in the dome. Well, it's not as official as it could have been. That's a good walleye and I'm not keeping them. So I don't have a cooler and ice and stuff. I said if I snagged something good, it's still official. So it's official. Walleye are in this river. <laughs> Be free. Oh, that's a rock, buddy. Go around. There you go. Be free. Sorry for the head poke. That was a nice fish to see regardless. I only needed to shoot one three inch prey bait for this much action. That's all I've had tied on this whole time is one three inch prey bait. Ooh, that was a good hit. I felt it. What are you? I take that back. That was not a hit. Dude, I could throw that back out as bait just like that. Wouldn't you say? Crazy. I felt that bite. Whoa. A fish jumped over there. As this one surfaced, that was weird. 
just demolishing them today. We might get one that has some loins on it soon. That'd be fantastic. You know, I might need to put a new bait on. This one served me well. But I didn't even let it cure. Who says you need to let your baits cure? A lot of people say soft plastics need like 24 hours to sit before you fish with them to achieve full hardness. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this. Never handle it or look at it again. I'm just gonna keep it anyway. I want it to seem special. There it is. Got a little guy. This can be addicting. Kind of seems like everything slowed down a little bit, so I'm gonna upsize. Might be 4.1 inch prey bait time. Beautiful. I'm a sucker for the clown color scheme. Hopefully this weeds the dinks. There it is. I think I got a snag out and I snagged a fish. Yeah. I know. I popped a snag out and a fish bit. That's a good smallie. Wow. Maybe I don't know what happened at all. And I got my best smallie of the day. <laughs> cool. I don't know how that happened. But upsize to the 4.1. We got a bigger fish. It took longer, but it happened. Cool, man. I don't know how many I've caught, but it's been a good day. The 5.4 inch epic whip wad. Let's finish today with one of them. That's on an 8 ounce jig head. Oh yeah, it's stable. Oh, that looks delicious. That is so perfectly stable, even on a 1 8 inch, 1 8 ounce jig head. A 5.4 inch bait. Oh, that was definitely a hit. Couldn't fully engulf the wad. Got one! Woohoo! On the whip wad! It's the biggest one yet. Because it's on the whip wad. <laughs> Boy, I set the hook like a bass master. I kind of feel like one right now. This is a good fish. Look at that smallie. Look at it. All right, open, please. You're just, you're digging yourself into a hole there, buddy. That, that about went down his throat sphincter. I don't know how he was doing that. He was sucking the bait deeper and deeper. Chunky football, Smalley. Like the whip wad, it's official. I feel complete. I feel accomplished. Be free. Chunky football, Smalley. It's been a fantastic day. Dude, catching fish is easy when you can fish with whatever you want. And they're biting, you know? I think that walleye was still bigger than that smallie, though. That was a good walleye I snagged in the forehead. Oh, 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 oh. Did you get, did you, I, I think I disturbed that fish. Yeah. I think that disturbed that fish. He was like, yow! Dude, everybody in this river needs to come over here and catch some fish because I don't see them catching anything and I don't mind. You can fish by me. I don't care. Or maybe it's just the awesome epic bait mold baits. Maybe that's what's doing it. Link in description to get your uh, whip wads and prey baits and all the other epic bait molds. Marling baits collaboration molds. Not the baits, the molds. <laughs> We got another on the whip wide. Guess what? It's a different species. Of course, we couldn't have gone a fishing trip without catching one of these fellas. Largy on the whip wide. Official. Of course. What a success.
I gotta go home though. Dang, man. We really loaded up on them today. I feel like a fishing stud. What a confidence boost.